we're doing our part to support Canada's efforts to get the best deal in these trade talks. Now, we will always hold the government to account for its performance at home, but here in Washington, we'll be speaking with one voice on behalf of all Canadians. As you saw there, Andrew Scheer is in Washington promoting Justin Trudeau's NAFTA efforts, trying to be the glue in the cracks that are fast appearing or have appeared in these negotiations. How useful is this so-called united Canadian front? That's a question for At Issue. Chantal is back, and she is in Montreal tonight. Andrew is in Toronto, as usual. And Josh Wingrove of Bloomberg joins us here in Ottawa. Good to see everybody, and thanks for joining us, Josh. Um, I'll start with you, Chantal. What, what I found interesting about what we've seen so far of this sheer visit is that at one point he is actually asked asked by someone to criticize the government's approach to NAFTA, and he refuses to repeat it, saying only, I'm not going to say that kind of stuff in the States, that's just for home. Is that an effective strategy? I think that was wise. Uh, I think that uh, it does more for uh, Andrew Scheer and the Conservative Party that he goes out there and forms himself, but also is supportive of the Canadian position rather than go to Washington and negotiate Canadian concessions with Canada from abroad. I also think that uh, it's a choice of necessity in the sense that uh, he still has some fairly prominent former seatmates, Rona Ambrose and James Moore, to name two of them, who are sitting on the Prime Minister's NAFTA Council. What do you think, Andrew? If, if you're saying one thing in one country and another in another, does it matter? Yeah, no, there's a sort of a tradition on these things. It's part of the politesse of politics that you don't go into other countries and criticize uh, the home team, if you will, particularly on such a, a fraught issue, on a, such a, a sensitive moment in the whole negotiations. He's been critical of them at home, and rightly so. I mean, beyond the politesse, I'm not sure what united stand means. Of course, everybody, at least in, in the Liberals and the Conservatives, wants to preserve NAFTA. Um, and, but that doesn't mean you can't be critical of the way the government is conducting the negotiations, yeah. and there's lots to be critical about. But as a matter of form, yeah, you don't do it on foreign soil. Josh. I think that the Trudeau strategy has been to have as many hands as possible, and having them singing from the same, same song sheet is helpful. What's also helpful, it's making Andrew Scheer's job easy, is the fact that Trump has taken positions that are pretty easy to be united against. And, you know, once this current debate that we're having now in Washington on the shutdown, if and when it's resolved, I think we're going to see more attention paid to NAFTA. And to the extent that you can have someone down there that, frankly, you know, speaks Republican in a way that someone like Christia Freeland might not be able to, mm -hmm. I think that only helps the Canadian cause. I'm not really focused too much on the domestic play. This is coming at a time when Trump is really all over the map on NAFTA. He said this week to Reuters that he might pull out to get a better deal after telling the Wall Street Journal that he'd prefer to negotiate rather than pull out. So, you know, it's really hard to read him, and I think the extent to which we have as many people as possible down there, uh, you know, from multiple stripes representing Canada, uh, it leaves sort of fewer or less room for Trump to divide and conquer, but, this, this uh, as is, he's prone to do. This is also an opportunity for Scheer to kind of subtly put some distance between himself and Stephen Harper as well. Harper, as we know, came out criticism, critical of the government's negotiating stance, which is fair That's enough. Right. Yeah. But yeah. his government was never really known for doing the statesmanlike nonpartisan thing. And, and this is a moment for Scheer to kind of look a bit more nonpartisan, yeah. and that's probably good from that standpoint. Like for, to, to, to project a tone that maybe Harper didn't have. That's right. Yeah. But it's also that, that uh, if in an election the issue comes up, the issue yes. isn't going to be whether uh, Scheer successfully cut the legs from under the Trudeau government right. on NAFTA, but whether you would trust him to do better than Trudeau on NAFTA. Yeah, so because, this yeah. is not a good time to be uh, shooting in the back of the Canadian and government. If the talks do fall through, there will be lots of opportunity for critical oversight on that sure. at that point. Sure. And there are people in this town talking about another NAFTA election, as crazy as it sounds. Okay, I want to switch topics because there's a lot to talk about here, too. And this is the issue of student uh, job grants and whether or not the government should have a say in sort of values and determining values around these grants. Here's a clip of the Minister, Patty Haidu. Our ministry is saying that we believe in the Canadian Human Rights and Char uh, uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms and that these are uh, fundamental, uh, fundamental expectation of Canadians is that we stand up for those rights and that we ensure that the money that we, dis we disperse on behalf of Canadians uh, is not used in a way that violates those hard-won rights. 
Josh, what, what do you make of the strategy here by the Liberals in terms of why they're doing this and then what, what the potential consequence could be, if any, because maybe they're alienating voters that they just didn't have? Yeah, I think the Liberals uh, like to sort of comfort themselves by thinking that they don't go down these sort of values paths that Stephen Harper, yeah. uh, in their view, went down too often. But they go down them a lot. And they also have a habit of letting storms brew before they really realize that they're brewing. We saw that on the tax reform in the summer. And frankly, it looks like the Liberals are getting caught flat-footed as a bunch of faith groups are coming forward and say they're being hit with something that the Liberal government says they actually won't be hit with. So I suppose the proof will be in the pudding. But you look on the form that they're asked to sign, and it's pretty explicit in one paragraph and then keeps going for two or three more. And you can see why it would be hard for a church group that runs, say, a summer camp to look at this and say, well, the jobs I'm hiring for aren't, you know, campaigning against a specific right, but the view of my faith group is not necessarily aligned with the view of Patty Heidi or Justin Trudeau. So I can get my funding for my job, but it means clicking a box that goes against my faith. That's the position that a lot of these faith groups say they're in. What do you make of that, Chantal? It did seem a little surprising from the Liberals. I agree with Josh. It's something I would have more expected from the Conservatives around the sort of values that they promote. Uh, and if it had come from the Conservatives, but in the reverse, there would be an uproar across the land. Mm -hmm. I find it uh, heavy-handed, but I also find the rationale that the minister put forward uh, surprising, because if you were so concerned about respecting the Charter of Rights and whatever, you would have some concern over respecting the freedom of religion and the freedom of expression yes. and, and the form that they've put forward, uh, nominally to prevent groups to get, uh, from getting money to campaign against access to abortion, mm -hmm. uh, does not respect uh, any of those freedoms. Andrew. I don't find this surprising at all from this government. Yeah. We saw this with the edict banning uh, pro-life candidates from running for the party. We saw it True. with the ruckus they made over Rachel Harder being appointed or you know, put forward as chairwoman of the Status of Women's Committee. This is a government that is, whether out of sincere conviction or political calculation, is utterly intolerant of any difference of opinion on this point of view. They are trying to marginalize and demonize people who have differing points of view on this particular question. Uh, look, we're the only country in the democratic world that has no abortion law. Now, that might be a good thing or a bad thing, but we're the outliers here. We're not the norm. We got that not because it was ever decreed that this was against the Charter. In fact, the Supreme Court went out of its way to propose how they might draft a new abortion law when they struck down the old one. The reason we don't have an abortion law is not because Parliament ruled on that. The House of Commons passed a new law. It, 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 it died on a tie vote in the Senate. So all of these things are part of the historical record. And for the government to pretend that this is just beyond the pale for anybody to have a different point of view on this, that everybody else are the extremists and the fanatics on this, I suggest they need to look at themselves in the mirror. I only have a couple of minutes, but is it possible that this is actually a tactical move to try and get the conservatives who are in favor of abortion <laughs> to be more vocal and pump up that base that Andrew Scheer is trying to quiet down? Well, that sounds Chantal. almost too smart for the way they're going about it. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm not even going to go down the tactical route. Uh, yes, possibly, it's, it is seen in some quarters as a political play to send a message to women that we stand for uh, yeah. a pro, a poor choice on abortion. But it's done in such a heavy-handed way that even if you are pro-choice, you look at this and you think, what about the precedent? that some a government that doesn't feel exactly the same way applies the same method because that's how it feels about things. And you think that can't be right. And I only have a minute left, Josh, but it also goes after the very, it goes after young people, which I thought the government was trying to promote in terms of getting jobs and stuff. So it seems a weird place to go after as well. Yeah, I mean, two things. I think they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They put this out there, but now they're walking it back and saying, no, 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 apply. And they're actually calling groups that got uh, funding in the past and saying, go for it. Mm. But the other thing is, I think this government tries to pick fights that it wants to be in politically. I think we're seeing that a bit with climate. It would only be too happy to ha fight Jason Kenney and Brad Wall on climate. And I think on this, they absolutely are sending a signal to their base of voters, which is more heavily women and more heavily young than at least the Conservatives, that we are in your corner on this one issue to the point that we're willing to risk looking like we're gaming the system of federal funding to, to go to bat for it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Andrew, Chantal, and Josh, good to see you.